Hi there, today we're diving deep into the mechanics of Titan X buy and burn smart contract. Understanding what really happens when you hit that trigger buy and burn button in the DAP. Also, we're going to answer the crucial question, is there admin keys? And if yes, what can they do? Can they steal the ETH sitting in the buy and burn smart contract? Stick around and let's uncover the details. Before we dive deep, here's a quick overview. Titan X has currently three smart contracts. Titan X smart contract itself, buy and burn V1 and buy and burn V2. Let's look at two examples. When you press the start minor button in the DAP, you essentially send a transaction to the Titan X smart contract, along with data to call the function start mint. This function accepts parameters such as mint power, num of days, and the current ETH cost to initiate a mint or a miner. Once the transaction has been confirmed, you have successfully started a miner. The ETH you have spent is now held in the Titan X smart contract. So what happens to the ETH? Again, in the DAB, there is a button called distribute ETH that anyone can click. You also receive a 0.33% incentive for calling this function because on the blockchain, things are automated. Someone has to pay for the gas fees. When this function is called, it checks how much ETH is in the smart contract. 3% goes to the Genesis wallet, 68% goes to buy and burn, and the remaining amount stays in the smart contract for distribution in the payout cycles. As illustrated, there is two buy and burn smart contract, V1 and V2. A transition occurred on November 7th, 2023, moving from V1 to V2. So the distribute ETH function now direct funds to V2. Admin keys are likely responsible for directing this transition. Stay tuned for further details on how this change was made. One thing not to forget, both V1 and V2 have both a function called buy and burn, which anybody can call. Before we dive deep into the Solidity code, there are a few things we need to find out first. Identify the deployer, identify the smart contract address of Titan X, buy and burn V1 and buy and burn V2. When you visit app.titanx.win, right at the bottom, you have all the information here. Here you have the token, buy and burn V1 and buy and burn V2. We're gonna copy the Titan X token first. We then gonna visit etherscan.io, paste in the address, and there you have it. This is the smart contract of Titan X right there. So let's go through some few things here, which we can identify. The first thing you can see is the contract creator. So here, this is the address of the contract creator. And this smart contract was created on this transaction. Let's click on the transaction. So here we can see it was 22 days and five hours ago, exactly on the October 28th, 2023 at 7.15. That was when this smart contract was created. And it was created by this address here. So this is the deployer. And if this video brought you any value, please don't forget to like, share, comment below, subscribe with the bell button. And if you go down here, this is the input data. Essentially, this is the bytecode and it contains the instructions to the computer in binary. So we're gonna go back. So we have essentially now know who the deployer was. And this is the address of the deployer. And let's see how we can find out the buy and burn address. Obviously, we can also just go and check it at app.titanix.com. But let's look more deeper at the code, how we can find this out. We're going to click the contract. And here you're going to see the contract source code for Titan X. It consists of 18 different files. And here at the end, you can find the contract ABI if you wanna interact with the smart contract itself. Right at the bottom, you can see the Genesis address here and the buy and burn address, which were set at the time of deployment. We're gonna check the buy and burn V2 later on. The most important file is titanix.sol. We're gonna copy this and paste it at remix.ethereum.org. 
So this is the whole code. The first thing we're going to look at is the constructor. The constructor is a special function in a smart contract that runs only once when the contract is deployed. So these variables are set by the deployer. As I've shown you earlier, there was the Genesis address and the buy and burn address. And these were set by the constructor at the beginning. And you can see here, constructor takes in the Genesis address and the buy and burn address and these can be set at the deployment time. Next function, start mint. As you can see, it accepts uh, two values, mean power and number of days, and it's also payable, means it can receive ETH. I don't wanna go exactly deep into it. Today, we're gonna focus more on functions which only the admin key can call. We're also going to open the Solidity code for the buy and burn V1, and this is the contract address. We copied it and this is the buy and burn v1 and also I have already prepared the buy and burn v2. It's going to be here. So here a quick summary of the timeline how the deployment at the beginning went. So we identified earlier the deploy address. So the deploy address initially at October 28th at 708 the buy and burn v1 deployment and then some few minutes later he deployed the Titanic smart contract. And some few minutes later, the create initial pool function was called. All this information can be seen on the block explorer. I have visited the deploy address. I'm going to go down, view all transactions and view the last one. And here is basically how I got the timeline. Buy and burn was created, Titanix was created. And later on, as you can see, the initial pool was created. To simplify the analysis, I've copied all the functions which only the admin key can call. Let's jump in into the Titanic smart contract. I stated earlier, the deployer deployed the smart contract. Right at the top, we have the constructor, which I explained earlier. And then here we can see set new Genesis address. And actually only the Genesis wallet can call this function. So next would be set buy and burn contract address. As you can see, it has the modifier only owner, and this can only call also by the owner of the smart contract. And a new buy and burn address can be set. And actually this is the function which was called to set the buy and burn V2. And the last function, enable burn pool reward. This can also be called by only the owner and, and it can be set to true. You can look in the Titanic smart contract yourself and you're going to see that the owner or the admin key has no access to the ETH. Only these functions can be called by the admin key or the owner of the smart contract. Let's jump to buy and burn contract v1. As usual, the constructor which sets the Genesis timestamp and the owner address of this smart contract. There is an interesting function here, the renounce ownership function. This can only be called also by the admin key. And so far, this hasn't been called. So the admin key can still call these other functions. And also there is another function which basically can, can change the admin key, set owner address. And here another function set Titan contract address. And then the last two functions, are uh, the interesting ones, set global wealth buy and buy and burn cap and set cap per swap and in the dab as you can see here the global cap is reached wait for the cap to move up so essentially the owner at some random time calls this function say global worth and buy and burn and then he can also set the cap per swap basically so you can see here the current cap per swap is one eth and the current global cap is 688 so whenever this goes up people can start calling the buy and burn function we can also look quickly on the code what exactly happens. So when you call the buy and burn function, it checks the global swap cap and also the total worth to buy and burn. And if the total worth buy and burn is less than global worth cap, then you're just going to get the reach max global cap. This is required. Otherwise you're going to get the error reach max global cap. So essentially, this is what you also see in the front end, basically. It's just simulating, calling that function, and then the error comes up and you're shown the error pretty much on the front end. Baron Baron contract v2 is very, very similar. You have the constructor again, uh, the owner address, cap, a swap, slippage, and interval is set. 
And then you have the similar function, renounce ownership, and then the set owner address. So the, the owner address can change as well. And then there is a three function, set cap per swap, set slippage, and set buy and burn interval. So these are all the function which the admin can call. So let's look how the transition from buy and burn v1 to buy and burn v2 went. So at some point, the deployer deployed the buy and burn v2. And then he had to call the function set buy and burn contract address, basically. So because now there's a new address, he has to set the new buy and burn address. You can look on the November 7, 2023, 903, the buy and burn v2 was created. You can see here it was from the deployer himself, and this is the address. And then, and then around 20 minutes later, the method set buy and burn contract address was called. And this is, is the function which was called. And it accepts the new contract address, which you can see this is the new buy and burn v2 address.